Hey guys. Hello. Oh, I'm Taylor. And I'm Hussein. And this is Cinematics. As you may or may not know, on Thursdays we have Theory Thursdays where we talk about TV show theories, movie theories, and all these other things. And it's pretty much just me who does that and uh, Hussein doesn't partake. So I thought it would be a fun idea this week for me to read off some theories that I found on the internet and for Hussein to comment on his thoughts as well as comment on the thoughts that we've already talked about on the show. Are on the channel. So right. if you haven't seen any of our other theory videos, you might want to see those first. They're all really short, like under five minutes. Um, I recommend the Baby Yoda one. It's my personal favorite. I think we've had two <laughs> so far. All right, you got to pick one. Yeah, the Baby Yoda one is definitely better than the Hocus Pocus one. But if you like Hocus Pocus, then you'll probably like the Hocus Pocus one too. I feel like that one's a little bit more niche though. Let's start with, we're going to start with a theory that's not actually about a movie. This article that I'm going to be taking a lot of these from, I got some of them from a Business Insider article, and I'll link that in the description down below if you want to read along. But the first one is about a ride at Disney World in Disneyland, and I think Disneyland Tokyo. Um, it's called the Haunted Mansion Ride. Have you been on that? Yeah. Have we been on that together? Not in Tokyo, but... No, I mean in Disney World. <laughs> yeah. Have we? We have? Yeah. Okay. In the Haunted Mansion at Disney theme parks, riders commit suicide during the course of the ride and become ghosts. And the... This is a theory. This is the theory. Okay. <laughs> no one actually attempted this? <laughs> no, like throughout the story of the dark ride. Oh, so this you is like in the fictional on, world. Yeah, in okay. the story of the ride. That's what you're doing. Okay, so here's what it says. At the beginning of the ride, the ghost... The ghost host, the narrator, says that the only way to escape the mansion is to die. And he shows that he hung himself. Um, near the end of the ride, there's a moment where a ride vehicle turns around backwards and you go off a balcony. Which, according to the theory, represents you jumping to your death. Before this part of the ride, the ghosts are all trying to scare you. But afterwards, they sing excitedly and invite you to the party with them. The only human character in the ride, the groundskeeper, appears after the balcony drop. He faces towards the rider and seems terrified of you. I actually have this portion of the ride that they're talking about in question. So before we get your comments, you can watch it. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I kind of, I, I like it. I feel like, okay, so I have a thing with theories where I'm really impressed if you're able to like, concrete proof mm -hmm. from you know from the source material actually like fabricated case that's like oh this probably wasn't intended but the supporting evidence is like oh wow that actually makes sense this I feel like is a bit of a stretch just because you happen really? to be turning around a little bit but I kind of like I do like the creativity behind it because it you do see trees and the sky as you're like oh you're around. definitely leaving as, the as, building no no I know you're leaving the building but like I never thought of that as a part of the ride where you're actually falling off a balcony to your death and then seeing oh, the groundskeeper there yeah. so I kind of like how you're the, whoever made this theory pulled those um little tidbits together and just happened to turn what was probably just a convenience and timing for the ghosts to be super happy that but you're among them. how do you explain, explain the, the groundskeeper? He did look really scary. Like, scared. He looked scared. Okay. I feel like most people would just think groundskeeper in a haunted mansion ride probably scary dude so he's gonna look scary no you didn't look scary he looked scared he looked scared but yeah you know because like it's a haunted mansion ride it's like a scary ride so it's like of course so he's gonna make scared faces and things like that that's what i think the park people were probably getting at but it makes sense the theory yeah. i think i think it technically makes sense also while watching this i realized this isn't there's some theory it's just something that's built into the ride you know how they have that piano that like plays itself yeah on the ground if you can see the ground, um, the shadow of the person who's playing the piano is on the ground That's as cool. he plays the piano. I know. Yeah. Only in Disney. The attention and detail that Disney has is insane. Yeah, no, that's really cool stuff. It's like my favorite part of Disney. It's like just looking at all the little tiny nooks and crannies. Um, I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. That's why I think that this theory could be true. Just because they do pay attention to so many details. So I kind of feel like not like everything has a purpose. And if that's what this purpose was, it's great. I can see that. I just feel like if realistically the intention of the people creating this ride was to insinuate that you as a okay, traveler dies yes. in that part, I feel like they would make it a bit more obvious. Okay, but the, the, 
the means of how you die isn't very family friendly or without controversy, okay. especially amongst religious family people. So I could see them trying to be like, you know what, let's just make it cutesy and fun. But like, if you know, you know, kind of thing. You get it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're being coy about it, but they're like, yeah, because it's like if it's attention. more clear that you're jumping out of a window, I feel like it would be less popular. Okay. As far as like my final thought on the theory, based mm-hmm. off what you're saying, right. I say it's plausible. Plausible. plausible but we just okay. don't. Know. But I, I could see it being the thing. All right. But what do you think? What do you think? Oh, what do I think? Yeah. I think the thing I like about theories is that they change my perspective on something that I thought about before. I really have to go on the ride again and see us through and like see what happens when I go into the stretch room and the, the portraits come down. Because I've been on that ride like five, six times and I've never gotten this impression. But I understand that I was like under like 18 for most of those things. So I probably wasn't thinking about it. I was probably like, oh my gosh, I'm in Disney World. What am I going to do next? Like, because there's so many things I just never even realized or remember seeing from that ride that I watched in the watch through to queue up the time. So I don't know. That's probably intention of the people who made it. If that was their real goal, is to say you're dead in that moment of the ride, they probably like, don't want the kids thinking that. I don't know. I can't. I guess so. Um, I'll come back to this theory after we go to Disney World the next time we go and ride that ride. Uh, I'll but. tell you how I feel, but for now I, I feel like it's a it's a it, it, it's sure it's why a double, not a double yay yeah double yay how many oh we're gonna do a plausibility scale yeah 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 okay. H- how many like Hussein brain cells out of five do you get it I give it a uh, if if a three out of five is a passing grade I'd say three a three three cells. Hussein's brain cells out of the five that exist. <laughs> okay, I do the same with Taylor brain cells okay. three out of five. Yeah, it, it, it just barely works. So, the first ever TV show theory I've ever heard of was the Angelica theory from the Rugrats. Have you heard that? No. Okay, I'm going to do a theory Thursday on that because it is convoluted, twisted, but it is fantastic. I like it. I, so, I want to hear it. I'm not going to tell you today. What? <laughs> Similar, the second theory I found, which was with, that I liked, that wasn't as good as this one, uh, as that one, is the Ed, Ed and Eddie theory. And there are different versions of this one. I feel like you just led me down a path and you're like, we're going this way now. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> this one is um, Ed, Ed, and Eddie's entire cast of kids are all dead and living in purgatory of an internal childhood cycle. So there are different versions of this one. This one, I think, uh, is really old. I've heard the la- the latest one, so I can film those details. But here it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a complete lack of any adults in purgatory. There are a number of explanations for the kids' deaths, ranging from an explosion due to a gas leak in the neighborhood to apocalyptic ones, such as a nuclear explosion that spread a deadly disease that killed most of Middle America. Another theory suggests that the kids in the cul-de-sac are dead, um, are dead children from the neighborhood, each from their own times, where Johnny and Rolf, Rolf, are from the 40s, Kevin from the 90s, Naz from the 60s, Jimmy um, from the 2000s, and so on. So I've actually heard of the one where they're on different uh, time periods, and I can tell you that one more in detail. So it's like, you know the Ed, Ed, and Eddie cul-de-sac? Mm-hmm. So the kids lived in their respective houses that they live in now, and that's why none of them ever like lived together outside of the siblings. Um, so it's like, I think Double D's from the 20s, um, Eddie's from the fo- the 30s or 40s, and that's why he's so mon- money hungry because there's no money around. Um, and then Ed and Sarah are from like a different time period, but like they all have deaths that relate to their personalities. Like Jimmy, I think, is the one with the he- wide the wire mouth thingy. Yeah, um, yeah, I think so. He's the he was like very sickly, like a bubble boy and cancer and everything. Um, so that's why he's all fragile and stuff when he dies. And Sarah and some other people died, blah, 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 blah. They all had their deaths. But every time they died, instead of going to heaven or hell, they get stuck in pur- purgatory because they're kids. It just becomes this collection of people a long time where they're just stuck in the cul-de-sac. And that's why they live amongst each other. And they don't have parents. Um, right. And then uh, little, little Eddie's brother comes in for like a movie or an episode or something. And that is because... 
uh, Eddie's brother is described to be reckless throughout the whole show. Like, Eddie's like, I'll get my big brother to beat you up. My big brother does this. My big brother is blah, 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 blah. And it's like, apparently he had a near-death experience where he dies, and then we see him, and that's because he, like, was almost in heaven, and then he leaves because he, it wasn't his time to die yet. And then the Kanker sisters are the only three characters in the show who don't have pink tongues. They have blue, purple, and I think, like, green tongues. Okay. And that's because they are demons. I don't know if that made any sense. I, I think I understood what you were getting at. I think the real linchpin of this, more than anything, is the fact that the parents aren't there. The help. Yeah. Um, which I'm actually very curious to know if there is at any point in any episode where they handle it like tra- Charlie Brown style, where you see like kind of like the parents' oh, figures, yeah. but they don't see their faces or they don't see them talking. The only but. thing I've personally seen was like, I remember Sarah and Ed were like, oh, my mom's coming to blah, 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 when they're at yeah, school they or something. Them. They mention their parents all the time. Yeah. Like, or Double D's like, oh, my parents were just here, but they left. Like, we don't ever see them. So it's possible that like... When their parents are there, it's like their parents are praying and they want to see them, so they, like, visit. You know how people believe that if, like, you pray for a dead person, you can see them? Sure. I think it's kind of like that because it's like, oh, my mom just said she was going to pick me up after school today. And then uh, they aren't there, but, like, they're not there for the rest of the show. So it's possible, but I don't know. if Like, we've never seen them is what I'm saying. I don't buy it. You don't believe I don't it. buy this theory. I, it, there's too much. Uh, it's a bit too theoretical for me, just because I don't. I don't really see much of the proof mm-hmm. in it. Um, I do think it's kind of cool, but uh, like these people are going inside stores. They're going inside. They're they're not just stuck in the cul-de-sac, like haunting it. You know, in these typical stories, you'd, you'd figure that these people are stuck at where their homes were, where the death occurred, or something like that, and they're like trapped, and you know, they're not able to escape. Um, but these people are interacting with the rest of the world. With their culture. They're in sex. schools, they're in, you know, yeah, stores, and there are teachers and other students but we don't who see, see them. see the scenes. teachers. Do we see other students? I think we, okay, I don't know if we see the teachers. I don't remember that. But we definitely see them in classrooms with other students. And uh, We see them in classes, in classrooms with the kids on the block. No. Well, I'd actually be very interested to, see, to review that footage and see, but I'm pretty sure we see, like, other rando kids. So how many brain cells... Out of five. I'll let you go first. Um, I give this two brain cells out of five because it's not completely incompetent. I, I could see it. I give it a one brain cell out of five. Remember the character Ralph who's like from uh, a farm or something? Right, yeah. Talks like he's from like the year 1902. That's what sold it for me as a kid because I was like, this. who is this character? Why is he so random? Why does he have a pig? Like, why is he never wearing shoes? Who is this person? So that's what sold it to me for yeah. me. I was like, I could totally see this character not being from the same time period as the rest of them. And like, why are you a farm in the middle <laughs> of a place that has cul-de-sacs? Who are you farming for? I'd like some more backstory have? on him, for sure. I don't know it. But I okay, I think Rolf is a good correlation. But like I said, hinging on the vague memory that there were other kids in school they interacted with. Just with that in mind, I think there is hard proof against this theory being true, which okay. is why I have to give it a one. I, I will not give it a zero, though, because I do think there's some nice correlations that they make, like the one you just mentioned. Next one we're going to do is the Rebecca Black song, Friday, is <laughs> about the JFK assassination. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, it says, the driver of the car he was assassinated in, and his name was Samuel Kicken. Kicken in the front seat, sitting in the back seat. The assassination occurred on a Friday, and when he was shot by the Secret Service, yelled to, at Jackie Kennedy to get down. Got to get down on Friday. Those are lyrics. Kicking in the front seat, sitting in the back seat is, is um, our lyrics. Got to get down on Friday. Those are lyrics. Parts of the Cold War and the spread of communists uh, are referenced. Oh, lyrics. Everybody's rushing. <laughs> it's it, like she says it like rushing, but this article wrote it as Russian, like the the, the nationality. Right. Everybody's rushing on Friday. Um. At <laughs> and to top it off, in the hotel that morning, JFK declined a breakfast, a breakfast of sausage, eggs, 
and toast for a bowl of bran flakes instead. He says, got to have a bowl, got to have cereal. Also, the following Monday, JFK was supposed to sign a bill into law requiring all public schools to provide bus transportation for their students. Got to catch my bus. Those are lyrics. Thoughts? <laughs> Whoever made this theory, I'm impressed with them. Why? Because uh, a lot of correlations that like right. put together. I don't believe it's real. I think this is an admirable effort, or admirable effort from whoever created this theory. Um, I do think that they they, they strung a, a lot of cor- uh, lyrics to happen to correlate to history, but I really think it's all it is. The one linchpin and why I think this theory is false is. Rebecca Black. <laughs> what? Uh, I, she's not known to be the best lyricist in history, and I doubt a 12-year-old girl would have read all of these excruciating details about JFK's assassination. Oh, you think she wrote the song? Yeah, did she not write the song? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it was one of those um, programs where it's like, I want my kid to be in a music video, or I want my kid to be like, a musician so i'll give you like x amount of money and you can produce an overly produced video and we'll put it on youtube and hope for the best yeah the writers were um patrice wilson and clarence J. okay who are grown adults at the time to imply that you have to be a grown adult to write deep material um, um I'm saying not, uh, not saying not saying i'm not saying not saying that but like if you're like a 11 12 year old girl you're probably not i don't know these details about JFK's assassination. But this is not the case. I don't know. Like, I, I think it's... Everything they're saying is a true, like, correlation. I just don't buy it. I just feel like it's a coincidence. That's my thing. And I wish I had more reasoning behind that, but it's just a gut feeling. You just so, feel like it's a coincidence? I mean, yeah. if that's how you feel, it's how you feel. They know. They have the information. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, relay the information in a way that's not going to get picked up by the normies. It did go viral, too. It did. It, it went viral really quick. So I was like, yeah. well, maybe it was just supposed to be a distraction from whatever's going on, but I couldn't find anything that was happening. So if you know something bad that happened around March 30th, 2011, let me know. I think for me, it's just uh, the, the brands are so... The, like JFK's histor- assassination, all the historical facts around that. It contrasts so much with the stupidity of that song that hey. I just don't think whoever wrote this was smart enough to make wow. this a subliminal message. But if I had to give a final score, I'd go like a 2.75 out of oh. five brain cells. That's my final score. Okay, my score, I think, would be around a two and a half as well out of five. Okay. I think it's a coincidence. Yeah. It just barely fails for me. Maybe I should go to 2.9. But no. I think it's too much. I think it's too close. Too- All right. Next, <laughs> we have the Jetsons and the Flintstones are two portions of the same society. Flintstones are like re- they they lived amongst the Jetsons. Like the Flintstone people and the Jetson people lived along the same planets. I guess they lived amongst each other, and then there became like a, a, a group of people who no longer wanted to live with like phones and TVs, and then the future. So they like unplugged essentially, and by unplugging, the only way for them to get a- around was to come back to Earth live on the surface of the earth without technology, without all of that. So then um, in order for them to be here and to live amongst themselves in the way that they're kind of acclimated to, they'd have to like use older things or like build technology based off what the actual earth had to offer. So it's kind of like if there were hipsters (laughs) <laughs> and the Jetsons, they'd be the Flintstones. And it kind of makes sense because if you look at any of the technology in the Flintstones, like their cars, they have cars and they're like, they look like, um, I guess cars with like loincloths. If loincloths were a car and you pick it up and you walk and you run, they have like telephones, they have um, sinks and the sink is like um, some other kind of dinosaur comes in and like they, it, they get it to use its mouth to regurgitate water, I guess. And, like, they have, like, a bunch of different things. It's kind of, like, things that we have now, but um, made out of the bare necessities. Whereas, like, if they were to actually be a part of, like, 
a Neolithic era, they wouldn't necessarily know what a TV is. So they wouldn't have a TV. They probably wouldn't even have thought about it or known to think about it. But these people have TVs and it's like, why do they know to do this? Like, why have a character watch TV? You know? Yeah. Do you get it? I know, I get it. I get it. Uh, I think there's two linchpins on this for me, or like two, two, two barriers in my mind for this. I, I, I want to actually believe this theory. I think it's a very cool theory. Mm-hmm. One, um, in the Jetsons, is there any mention or sight of a dinosaur? Because there's a dinosaurs are in the Flintstones, but not in the Jetsons, I believe. Mm, I don't know if there's any mention of a dinosaur, but I'm pretty sure there's a crossover. Yeah, because uh, for me, like I feel like the whole like linchpin on this like uh, in this theory is if there's like plausible proof that there are elements from both universes that have been existing, like in both shows. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean the creators. I think it's. I think they're both Hanna Barbera. Um, whatever. Mm-hmm. Cartoons, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they've been a similar. Yeah, they, there's an episode called "The Flintstones." And the Jetsons meet the Flintstones, so there's a crossover episode. Okay. In that case, I gotta say it's real. <laughs> yeah. I gotta give it a plausible. Without seeing that TV movie from 1987, because we don't know, and that TV movie from 1987, it could have been like they transported back in time or whatever. Oh, like from a portal or something like yeah. that. Okay. Without okay, without seeing that, just knowing that there are Based elements that. from those universes that have collided, mm-hmm. I I gotta give it more of a plausible grade. I I suppose I don't know if we want to make it more about the in depth like details about the theory, mm-hmm. how they basically decided we don't want to be part of this anymore. Let's go abandon technology. I do think that part is plausible because they all speak English. Mm-hmm. They know what cars are, yes. and they made like devices that look like cars, which if people knew what technology was and decided to abandon it, you'd probably make your mode of transportation similar to a car. Yeah. Unless you just wanted to ride a horse or a dinosaur or something. But they don't have animals. I mean, this theory says that they created the dinosaurs. Okay. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, they yeah. built them. I buy it. I buy so it. So you give it five? I'll hold on my score until okay, after you me? say stuff. Um, I, I think this is a fairly, one of the more credible ones, mainly because as a human living amongst other humans, I realize that we like to make life a lot easier for ourselves. And um, as a person who lived in Brooklyn, hipsters exist. And I've seen hipsters go from, oh my gosh, I love this phone, to, you know what, everybody has this phone, I don't want it anymore. It's, I'm just going to use this flip phone. But then they get an iPad and use pretty much what they would use their their smartphone for with their iPad. So it's like, is it really easier? Um, but like, I can totally see like a world where people are like, oh, I am so tired of technology, I no longer want it. But then they build their own world where it's pretty much the same thing, you just don't have screens. So it's like the technology is still there, do you know what I mean? It's just now made out of wood and not metal. So I can see that happening. So those two barrier things for me aren't necessarily um, a bad thing. And you're right, they do speak um, English pretty well. They're not like, for a caveman show, they're not talking like cavemen. No. Um, they did name their kid Bam Bam, but I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't there's know. no explaining that. <laughs> yeah. But Welma is a pretty 50s name. George, Welma and George, I can see them getting married. They're from the different shows. Um, I don't know. Wilma? Wilma, I think. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I can give a rating first. I think I'd give this a four and a half to a 4.75. I will go with a four. Okay. Four Hussein brain cells out of five. The reason I'm not doing a five is because, like, the five would be, like, the Spongebob theory that, uh, Spongebob is, like, a... It's actually on this thing. I'll read the title. Okay. Well, do you want to do you want to like save that for? No, because I'm not. Segment? I have no, I have no inclination to even do this theory. But this one okay. is like SpongeBob SquarePants. It's commentary about nuclear testing. Um, <laughs> that one would be a five for me because the theory, cre- the, the the TV show creators came out and confirmed this. I, I mean, have, yeah, we can't like use that. What do you mean? I mean, that's just not fun. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I so I don't care. That's why I'm not even going to talk about it because yeah. like. It's true. Like I don't, I don't care. 
Anyway, <laughs> so we're going to talk about the Baby Yoda um, okay. theory, which if you guys haven't seen that theory, then I suggest you click the thingy over there and you go watch the video because it's actually pretty good. So, thanks. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the... We haven't really talked about it since I uploaded it. Um, what do you What do you think about it? So, uh, I will say that I like the theory in the sense that it does pull from... Just the Star Wars does this thing where uh, they will plant a seed in one place, in one time, in one piece of source material, like let's say a book or a, like a cartoon or whatever, and then like in another cartoon or another movie or another thing, they'll call back to that one source material. You know, that like one with little, the dark saber thing. Yeah, with the dark saber thing. Yeah, like I had it, no idea what that was. Yeah, like an example is like the Mandalorian. It showed it, it's revealed in the end that uh, you know Gus Spring from Breaking Bad has the dark saber in his possession. I forgot his name in, in the Mandalorian, but like uh, and so the dark saber is something that is introduced in the Clone Wars, where they uh, it's like this ancient Mandalorian artifact that oh, has it's been from the down. Clone Wars. It is from the Clone Wars. Yeah, it's introduced oh. there. Or it's a Mandalorian artifact that has been used by the ruler of Mandalore. Um, uh, it's like kind of like their weapon that they pass down, kind of thing. So, but then you know it flips hands and all that stuff. So Star Wars does that kind of thing. And I think your theory that um, light the 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 light lady from the Clone Wars, who I think her name was just Light, right? I don't remember her actual name. I don't know her name. Yeah. I know she was referred to as the daughter. Yeah, the, okay, the daughter. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, the daughter from the Clone Wars who did die past her, her light side, whatever, aura to Ahsoka. And then Ahsoka is meant to pass it down to Baby Yoda. who Eventually. Is, yeah, eventually. Or if the child. It's, like, literally the child. So, like, um, the, this theory was created to, like, explain why the child was as important as he is and why Disney insisted that everybody called him the child and not Baby Yoda. Because mm-hmm. in this theory, the specific wording for the for Baby Yoda is the child. So it's not even that. It's like a, a two-part. Like, they call him the child in the show, but the person who this would be in the theory, it's like how Anakin's the chosen one. It's the, the opposite of the chosen one. It's just the child. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So, like, the chosen one and the child. So, they're saying, not only is it the chosen one and the child, but the child is actually the one being referred to as the child. So, when Mando gets the child, or when he has to get the child, it's not because he's just a kid and he has to protect him, but it's because he is this important aspect to the formula. He is the child. It's plausible. And I do think, uh, I do like what you're drawing with, like, the, the child being... In the naming convention of the son, the father, the daughter, the child, mm-hmm. um, I do think it. I like then it Ahsoka how it is the mother. Right, but what makes her the mother? Because she has the life from the daughter, so she. It's essentially that the daughter, because the daughter gave her life to the mother, they're the same. So as Ahsoka grows, she grows to the point where she is the mother, and the mother will come and teach the child um, a bunch of stuff and like how to care for like the incumbent chosen one and all that other stuff but in order for there to be like balance amongst this passage of light there has to be dark and the dark is the death of the mother so the mother gives her life to the child to then become the chosen one not the chosen one to become the uh teacher for the chosen one okay fair enough sure uh i have nothing else to add (laughs) all right um come back for the angelica theory on thursday i'm gonna work on it soon so i'll be up I almost promise. Um, that's all I have to say. Anything else? Nope. Happy almost birthday or birthday if it's your birthday. <laughs> um, eh. Bye. Bye. Oh, subscribe, like, share, rate. This isn't a podcast. Yeah, click. Comment, comment. We need comments. Nobody say anything. Click right here to do it. Who's saying? Stop doing that. Come on, you gotta add a button here at some point. No. Bye.